How does the air become a conductor? When the charges have enough energy to begin to ionize the air of the free electrons will form a negatively charged step leader that will go from the cloud and make its zigzagged and often branched trip toward the ground. This process is slow, taking a few tenths of a second. The leaders are also weak and usually invisible. The atoms in the air near the ground. Feeling the attractive force from the electrons in the step leader, separate into ions and free electrons. The positively charged air ions from tall objects, such as trees, buildings, and towers leave in streamers. When a step leader and streamer meet, a channel of ionized air is created. Allowing large amounts of charge to move between the cloud and the ground. The return stroke of charge back to the cloud is the brightest part of the process. How was the connection between electricity and magnetism discovered? The close connection between electric current and magnetic fields was discovered quite by accident. In 1820, Danish physicist Hans Christian Ørsted, 1777-1851 gave a lecture on the heating effects of an electric current on a wire. A compass happened to be near the wire and he was surprised to see the compass rotate when the current was on. He had been looking for connections between electricity and magnetism for several years but expected that the compass would point away from the wire. Instead he found that the compass pointed in a circle around the wire. Above the wire it pointed perpendicular to the wire. Below the wire it also pointed in the perpendicular, but in the opposite direction. What is an open circuit? A circuit is a closed loop through which electric charges can flow. If the loop is opened, then it is called an open circuit and charges no longer flow. A switch is commonly used to open and close a circuit. If a wire breaks, the connection between the wire and another part of the circuit fails. Or if a lamp burns out, its filament breaks, then the circuit is opened and there is no current. What discovery did James Clerk Maxwell make that depended on the work of Ersted, Faraday, and Ampere? In an earlier chapter we have seen that charges create electric fields. In this chapter we have seen that moving charges, that is, currents, create magnetic fields and that changing magnetic fields produce electric fields. In the 1860s Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell, 1831-1879, added a crucial additional connection. Changing electric fields can produce magnetic fields. With that idea Maxwell recognized that these relationships 
meant that electric and magnetic fields could move through space. The fields move through space as transverse waves that are perpendicular to each other. Maxwell calculated the speed and found that it was equal to the speed of light. He published his results in 1864 and a textbook on electromagnetism in 1873. In 1881 Oliver Heaviside wrote Maxwell's famous four equations in the form they are used today. In 1888 Heinrich Hertz, 1857-1894, transmit electromagnetic waves across his laboratory. Confirming Maxwell's theoretical work What is magnetic declination? Magnetic declination is the angular difference between north as shown by a compass and the direction to the geographic north pole, Earth's axis of rotation. Declination depends primarily on the location on Earth but, because the magnetic poles move, also on time. What is a dip needle and how is it similar to a compass? A dip needle is just like a conventional compass. But instead of holding it horizontally, it is held vertically. It is a magnetic needle used for navigational purposes just like a compass. But is used predominantly when traveling around the North and South Poles. Instead of measuring horizontal magnetic deflection, the dip needle measures vertical magnetic inclination. When over the equator, the magnetic field of Earth is parallel to the surface of the Earth. The closer one gets to the magnetic poles, however, the less pilots rely on compasses. And the more they rely on dip needles to tell them how close they are to the poles. The closer one gets to a pole, the more vertical the magnetic field becomes. Because it's turning into the surface of Earth. Therefore, when directly over the magnetic poles, the dip needle points directly downward. Are series or parallel circuits used in our homes? Each circuit, by itself, contains a series connection of a switch and lamp or appliance. The circuits themselves are connected in parallel so that they can be used independently. What is a Faraday cage? A Faraday cage, named after British physicist Michael Faraday, is a cage. Metal grating, or metallic box that can shield electrical charge. Charges gather on the outer shell of the cage because they are repelled by one. Another and can be further from each other if they are on the outside of the cage. This results in no charge within the Faraday cage. The metal sphere of a Van de Graaff generator is a Faraday cage. Cars and airplanes can be Faraday cages as well.
and may provide some protection from lightning during an electrical storm. Does Benjamin Franklin's definition of positive and negative agree with today's understanding of charge? Franklin decided that sparks given off by an object charged by a glass rod, vitreous electricity, looked more like fluid leaking out than did the sparks from an object charged by a rubber rod, raisinous electricity. Thus he decided that glass had an excess of electrical fluid. Today we know that electric charge is mostly carried by electrons. Electrons are charged the same way that rubber or plastic is, negatively. Thus we say that they have a negative charge. Because they are transferred much more easily than are the more massive. Positively charged nuclei, when there is an excess of electrons the object is negatively charged. When there is a lack of electrons it is positively charged. So even though Franklin made the wrong choice, we still follow his convention. How is Earth's magnetic field oriented? Because opposite poles attract. The north pole of a hanging magnet or compass must point toward a south pole. So, the south pole of Earth's magnet must be near the north geographic pole. The poles are actually far below Earth's surface, so Earth's field is not parallel to its surface. Why are electromagnets, the kind that pick up junk cars, so strong? An electromagnet is a coil of current carrying wire. Wound on an iron core that is at the center of an iron cup. The magnetic field created by current in the wire is strengthened by the iron core. The strength of the magnetic field produced by such electromagnets creates a large force. As described by the Lorentz force law that allows people to more easily move large metal objects. Such as steel cars, from one location to another. Why are electromagnets, the kind that pick up junk cars, so strong? An electromagnet is a coil of current carrying wire. Wound on an iron core that is at the center of an iron cup. The magnetic field created by current in the wire is strengthened by the iron core. The strength of the magnetic field produced by such electromagnets creates a large force. As described by the Lorentz force law that allows people to more easily move large metal objects. Such as steel cars, from one location to another. What is the difference between a motor and a generator? In each device, a magnet and a coil of wire are employed to change one form of energy into another form. 
A motor consists of multiple loops of wire placed in a magnetic field. Either the loops or the magnet can rotate. The current through the wires in the field causes a force that results in rotation and thus mechanical energy. Motors in a home are used in fans, hair dryers, and food processors. There are over a hundred motors in a modern automobile. The starter motor is the largest and most powerful. A generator does the opposite of a motor, it changes mechanical to electrical energy. But still consists of multiple loops of wire in a magnetic field. Either the loops or the magnet can rotate. In an automobile a form of a generator, called an alternator, uses some of energy from the engine to charge the battery. Backup generators use the energy from a gasoline engine to produce enough electrical energy. To keep some of the lights and appliances running in a house when the electrical power fails. Electric utilities use huge generators to provide power for a city or larger area. The generators get their energy from steam turbines. The heat required to turn water into steam can come from coal, oil, natural gas, or nuclear burners. Wind power uses generators turned by the propeller blades. What is the difference between a motor and a generator? In each device, a magnet and a coil of wire are employed to change one form of energy into another form. A motor consists of multiple loops of wire placed in a magnetic field. Either the loops or the magnet can rotate. The current through the wires in the field causes a force that results in rotation and thus mechanical energy. Motors in a home are used in fans, hair dryers, and food processors. There are over a hundred motors in a modern automobile. The starter motor is the largest and most powerful. A generator does the opposite of a motor, it changes mechanical to electrical energy. But still consists of multiple loops of wire in a magnetic field. Either the loops or the magnet can rotate. In an automobile a form of a generator, called an alternator, uses some of energy from the engine to charge the battery. Backup generators use the energy from a gasoline engine to produce enough electrical energy. To keep some of the lights and appliances running in a house when the electrical power fails. Electric utilities use huge generators to provide power for a city or larger area. The generators get their energy from steam turbines. The heat required to turn water into steam can come from coal, oil, natural gas, or nuclear burners. Wind power uses generators turned by the propeller blades. How do earbuds use the results of electromagnetism? An earbud contains a membrane made out of thin plastic. In the center of the membrane is a coil of wire called the voice coil. The coil fits in a cylindrical slot in a permanent magnet. 
the center rod of the magnet is one pole, the outside tube is the other. Resulting in a magnetic field perpendicular to the wire. When there is a current through the wire the Lorentz force on the wire pushes the membrane in and out. The membrane exerts forces on the air molecules producing the longitudinal waves constituting sound. Refer to the sound chapter for more information. How do earbuds use the results of electromagnetism? An earbud contains a membrane made out of thin plastic. In the center of the membrane is a coil of wire called the voice coil. The coil fits in a cylindrical slot in a permanent magnet. The center rod of the magnet is one pole, the outside tube is the other. Resulting in a magnetic field perpendicular to the wire. When there is a current through the wire the Lorentz force on the wire pushes the membrane in and out. The membrane exerts forces on the air molecules producing the longitudinal waves constituting sound. Refer to the sound chapter for more information. How are magnetic materials used in computers? Magnets are used in the compact motors that turn the discs in the CD or DVD. Drive and that move the laser that reads the disc to the correct position. Motors rotate the discs in a hard drive. The arm on which the read slash right head is mounted is rotated to the correct. Portion of the hard drive disc has a coil of wire on it in a magnetic field. When there is a current through the wire the force moves the arm to the correct position. The disc itself is often made of aluminum coated with an extremely thin 10 to 20 nanometers film of magnetic material that is divided into submicrometer thick regions that are perpendicular to the surface of the disc. Each region is magnetized one way to represent a one and another way to represent at zero a tiny coil in the reed slash right head carries the current that magnetizes the regions. How are magnetic materials used in computers? Magnets are used in the compact motors that turn the discs in the CD or DVD. Drive and that move the laser that reads the disc to the correct position. Motors rotate the discs in a hard drive. The arm on which the read slash right head is mounted is rotated to the correct. Portion of the hard drive disc has a coil of wire on it in a magnetic field. When there is a current through the wire the force moves the arm to the correct position. The disc itself is often made of aluminum coated with an extremely thin 10 to 20 nanometers film of magnetic material that is divided into submicrometer thick regions that are perpendicular to the surface of the disc. Each region is magnetized one way to represent a one and another way to represent at zero a tiny coil in the reed slash right head carries the current that magnetizes the regions.
How do metal detectors work? Built into the frame of a metal detector are coils of wire that carry a current. When metal is close to the coils, the magnetic properties of the metal change the current in the coils of wire that is detected by the electronic circuits in the detector. When you walk through a metal detector with metal anywhere on your person, that metal changes the current in the coils in the frame of the detector. How do metal detectors work? Built into the frame of a metal detector are coils of wire that carry a current. When metal is close to the coils, the magnetic properties of the metal change the current in the coils of wire that is detected by the electronic circuits in the detector. When you walk through a metal detector with metal anywhere on your person, that metal changes the current in the coils in the frame of the detector. How do traffic lights at car intersections know when a vehicle is present? Many traffic lights are triggered to change by the approach of a car. The principle is similar to the metal detector. In that there are coils of current carrying wire just below the road where the vehicles stop at the intersection. When a large enough amount of metal passes over the coil, it induces a change in the current that creates a signal in the electronic circuits that control the traffic light. How do traffic lights at car intersections know when a vehicle is present? Many traffic lights are triggered to change by the approach of a car. The principle is similar to the metal detector. In that there are coils of current carrying wire just below the road where the vehicles stop at the intersection. When a large enough amount of metal passes over the coil, it induces a change in the current that creates a signal in the electronic circuits that control the traffic light. What are maglev trains? Maglev, or magnetically levitated trains, are different from conventional trains in that they use electromagnetic forces to lift the cars off the track and propel them along thin magnetic tracks. Some demonstration trains have reached speeds of 500 km per hour, 300 miles per hour. Although the United States has no maglev train, nor an active research program in this technology. Germany and Japan have conducted a great deal of research in the field. What are maglev trains? Maglev, or magnetically levitated trains, are different from conventional trains in that they use 
electromagnetic forces to lift the cars off the track and propel them along thin magnetic tracks. Some demonstration trains have reached speeds of 500 km per hour, 300 miles per hour. Although the United States has no maglev train, nor an active research program in this technology. Germany and Japan have conducted a great deal of research in the field. What are the two main forms of maglev transportation? The German system uses the attractive forces between electromagnets to lift. The underside of the train 15 cm, 6 inches, above its guide rail. The coils in the train and guide rail form a linear motor like an ordinary motor that has been unrolled. The only commercial operation is a train in China that transports people 30 kilometers in slightly over 7 minutes. The Japanese have taken a slightly different approach toward maglev technology. The track and train repel each other. Propulsion also uses a linear motor. Levitation works well at high speeds, but when starting and stopping traditional wheels must be used. What are the two main forms of maglev transportation? The German system uses the attractive forces between electromagnets to lift. The underside of the train 15 cm, 6 inches, above its guide rail. The coils in the train and guide rail form a linear motor like an ordinary motor that has been unrolled. The only commercial operation is a train in China that transports people 30 kilometers in slightly over 7 minutes. The Japanese have taken a slightly different approach toward maglev technology. The track and train repel each other. Propulsion also uses a linear motor. Levitation works well at high speeds, but when starting and stopping traditional wheels must be used. What are the Van Allen belts? Charged electrons and protons from solar wind and cosmic rays entering Earth's magnetic field. Feel the Lorentz force that traps them into spiral orbits about the magnetic field lines. They create donut-shaped regions of charged particles called the Van Allen belts. The belts are concentrated around the equator and become thinner as they approach the poles. The two belts are located at 3,200 km and 16,000 km above the surface of Earth. What are the Van Allen belts? Charged electrons and protons from solar wind and cosmic rays entering Earth's magnetic field. Feel the Lorentz force that traps them into spiral orbits about the magnetic field lines. They create donut-shaped regions of charged particles called the Van Allen belts. 
the belts are concentrated around the equator and become thinner as they approach the poles. The two belts are located at 3,200 km and 16,000 km above the surface of Earth. Why aren't the Van Allen belts present around the North and South Poles? At the equator, the magnetic field is parallel to the ground and the electrons and protons from the solar wind can become trapped around the field lines. At the poles, however, the magnetic field strengthens, the lines become closer together and forces on the particles push them back toward the equator. Some of the most energetic particles are able to penetrate the atmosphere where they interact with oxygen and nitrogen atoms producing the natural light shows that are called auroras. Why aren't the Van Allen belts present around the North and South Poles? At the equator, the magnetic field is parallel to the ground and the electrons. And protons from the solar wind can become trapped around the field lines. At the poles, however, the magnetic field strengthens, the lines become closer together. And forces on the particles push them back toward the equator. Some of the most energetic particles are able to penetrate the atmosphere where they interact. With oxygen and nitrogen atoms producing the natural light shows that are called auroras. What causes the northern lights? Disturbances on the sun can send large numbers of charged particles into space. When they reach Earth they disturb the Van Allen belts. Causing the belts to dump particles into Earth's atmosphere. There they interact with the gases in the atmosphere, causing them to emit light. The scientific name for this phenomena is aurora. What causes the northern lights? Disturbances on the sun can send large numbers of charged particles into space. When they reach Earth they disturb the Van Allen belts. Causing the belts to dump particles into Earth's atmosphere. There they interact with the gases in the atmosphere, causing them to emit light. The scientific name for this phenomena is aurora. Are there different names for auroras in the northern and southern hemispheres? An aurora in the northern hemisphere, known as the northern lights, is officially called aurora borealis. While an aurora in the southern hemisphere, or southern lights, is called the aurora australis. Are there different names for auroras in the northern and southern hemispheres?
an aurora in the northern hemisphere, known as the Northern Lights, is officially called Aurora Borealis. While an aurora in the southern hemisphere, or southern lights, is called the Aurora Australis. What are the properties of magnets? You probably played with magnets since you were a child. It is likely that you found that magnets attract some materials but not others. You may have found that you can use a magnet to magnetize items like paper clips, nails, and screws. If you played with two magnets you found that they could either attract or repel each other. Whether you played with metal bar-shaped magnets, rectangular or circular ceramic magnets. You found that the magnet exerted stronger forces at the ends or faces of the magnets. Those regions are called poles. If you hang the magnet from a string, so it can rotate freely you'll find the magnet orienting itself north to south. The end facing north is called the North Pole, the other the South. Like poles repel each other while unlike poles attract, but either end can attract other materials. Children often discover some of the properties of magnetism by playing with bar magnets and metal shavings. In this way, you can easily discover that magnets have opposite poles and create magnetic fields. Magnetic poles always come in north-south pairs called dipoles, two poles. Some theories predict the existence of isolated north or south poles, called monopoles. But, there have been extensive searches for monopoles over the past decades and none has ever been found. Why are electromagnets, the kind that pick up junk cars, so strong? An electromagnet is a coil of current carrying wire. Wound on an iron core that is at the center of an iron cup. The magnetic field created by current in the wire is strengthened by the iron core. The strength of the magnetic field produced by such electromagnets creates a large force. As described by the Lorentz force law that allows people to more easily move large metal objects. Such as steel cars, from one location to another. What is a GFI, or Ground Fault Interrupter? A Ground Fault Interrupt Outlet is now required by building codes for outlets within 6 feet of a sink or in any other environment where water could be close to the outlet. Normally the currents in the black and white wires will be equal. But if the water provides an alternative current path, then the two currents will no longer be the same. The GFI detects this difference and shuts off the circuit within milliseconds. GFIs should be tested periodically to make sure the electronic circuit is still working. What is a magnetic field?
just as the gravitational field is the region around a massive object that causes the attractive force on another object with mass. A magnetic field is the region around a magnet that causes forces on magnetic materials or other magnets. What are maglev trains? Maglev, or magnetically levitated trains, are different from conventional trains in that they use electromagnetic forces to lift the cars off the track and propel them along thin magnetic tracks. Some demonstration trains have reached speeds of 500 km per hour, 300 miles per hour. Although the United States has no maglev train, nor an active research program in this technology. Germany and Japan have conducted a great deal of research in the field. What are the two main forms of maglev transportation? The German system uses the attractive forces between electromagnets to lift the underside of the train 15 centimeters, 6 inches, above its guide rail. The coils in the train and guide rail form a linear motor like an ordinary motor that has been unrolled. The only commercial operation is a train in China that Transports people 30 kilometers in slightly over 7 minutes. The Japanese have taken a slightly different approach toward maglev technology. The track and train repel each other. Propulsion also uses a linear motor. Levitation works well at high speeds, but when starting and stopping traditional wheels must be used. Many outlets have three holes. What is the purpose of each hole? Outlets have two slots, one longer than the other, and a D-shaped hole. The contacts in the shorter slot are connected to a black wire. This is the hot connection that carries the 120 volts. The contacts in the longer slot are connected to a white wire, called the neutral wire. The white wire is connected to ground in the electric distribution box. Thus there is a potential difference of 120 volts across the two contacts. The third hole is attached to a green wire that is at ground potential. What are the Van Allen belts? Charged electrons and protons from solar wind and cosmic rays entering Earth's magnetic field. Feel the Lorentz force that traps them into spiral orbits about the magnetic field lines. They create donut shaped regions of charged particles called the Van Allen belts. The belts are concentrated around the equator and become thinner as they approach the poles. The two belts are located at 3,200 km and 16,000 km above the surface of Earth.
What if the tool or appliance has a three-prong plug but you have only two slot outlets? Do not use the appliance if you do not have the proper outlet for the device. Cutting off the grounding prong will defeat the safety feature of the separate ground wire. What materials make the strongest permanent magnets? Traditional permanent magnets were made of an alloy of aluminum, nickel, and cobalt, called alnico. Ceramic and rubber magnets use ferrites, an iron oxide material. In the 1980s the automobile companies searched for materials to reduce the weight of motors in their cars. They found an alloy of cobalt and samarium, a rare earth. Made strong, lightweight magnets, but were extremely brittle and expensive. Today the strongest magnets are made from a lanthanum iron boron, lib, alloy. Their strength can be as much as 20 times that of iron magnets. They are also brittle and so are coated with a plating of nickel and copper. Their price has fallen so much that they are used to hold sunglasses to eyeglass frames. In necklace clasps, and in children's toys. Why do you need two connections at the ground potential? Because when the appliance plugged in draws current, there is current through both the black and white wires. Each wire has resistance, so there will be a voltage drop across the white wire. And it will be above ground potential at the outlet. While this voltage will be small, it could be dangerous. The green wire, which carries no current, will remain at ground. It can be connected to the metal case of the appliance. Assuring that the case will remain at ground potential. When installing an electrical outlet, note that the green wire. Okay, you can't tell in this black and white photo, but it is there is the grounding wire, which must be attached to the grounding contact on the outlet. What materials are attracted to magnets? Iron, nickel, and cobalt and most of their alloys are attracted to magnets. Other metals, like silver and gold, copper, tin, stainless steel, zinc. Brass and bronze are not attracted. Nonmetals are not attracted. Iron, nickel, and cobalt are called ferromagnetic. All materials respond to magnetic fields, but most respond so weakly that the forces are hardly felt. Those that are repelled are called diamagnetic, those attracted are paramagnetic. What causes the northern lights? Disturbances on the sun can send large numbers of charged particles into space. 
when they reach Earth they disturb the Van Allen belts. Causing the belts to dump particles into Earth's atmosphere. There they interact with the gases in the atmosphere, causing them to emit light. The scientific name for this phenomena is aurora. How did Luigi Galvani's experiments lead to the development of current electricity? Galvani believed that the flow of charge from the nerve into the muscle caused the contractions. His fellow scientist at the University of Bologna, Alessandro Volta, 1745-1807. Recognized that Galvani's frog leg was both a conductor and a detector of electricity. In 1791, he replaced the leg with paper soaked in salt water, a conductor, and used another means of detecting the electricity. He found that charges flowed only if the two metals touching the paper were different. The combination of two different metals separated by a conducting solution is called a galvanic cell after Galvani. Volta went further. He found that the two metals that produced the greatest electrical effect were zinc and silver. In 1800 he stacked alternating discs of zinc and silver, separated by a card wetted with salt water. He found that this device, called the voltaic pile, was a continuous source of charge flow. Sir Humphrey Davy showed that the charge flow was due to a chemical reaction between the metals and the conductive solution in the cards. Why is a car often the best place to be when lightning strikes? It is not because of the rubber tires. Many people think the rubber tires of a car provide insulation from the lightning striking the ground. How do earbuds use the results of electromagnetism? An earbud contains a membrane made out of thin plastic. In the center of the membrane is a coil of wire called the voice coil. The coil fits in a cylindrical slot in a permanent magnet. The center rod of the magnet is one pole, the outside tube is the other. Resulting in a magnetic field perpendicular to the wire. When there is a current through the wire the Lorentz force on the wire pushes the membrane in and out. The membrane exerts forces on the air molecules producing the longitudinal waves constituting sound. Refer to the sound chapter for more information. Why shouldn't you stand under a large tree during a thunderstorm? During thunderstorms, Many people stand under trees in an effort to stay dry. However, this can have dire consequences. In the spring of 1991, a lacrosse game at a Washington, D.C. High school was postponed after lightning was observed in the sky. 
Over a dozen spectators ran for shelter under a tall tree to protect themselves from the rain. A few seconds later, lightning struck the tree. Injuring 22 people and killing a 15-year-old student. Is it true that lightning never strikes the same place twice? This is absolutely false. The Empire State Building in New York City is just one. Example of where lightning has struck more than once. In some thunderstorms, the tower on the Empire State Building has been hit several dozen times. How do traffic lights at car intersections know when a vehicle is present? Many traffic lights are triggered to change by the approach of a car. The principle is similar to the metal detector. In that there are coils of current carrying wire just below the road where the vehicles stop at the intersection. When a large enough amount of metal passes over the coil. It induces a change in the current that creates a signal in the electronic circuits that control the traffic light. How do metal detectors work? Built into the frame of a metal detector are coils of wire that carry a current. When metal is close to the coils, the magnetic properties of the metal change the current in the coils of wire that is detected by the electronic circuits in the detector. When you walk through a metal detector with metal anywhere on your person, that metal changes the current in the coils in the frame of the detector. What causes materials to be attracted to magnets? The ultimate cause of magnetism is electrons. When electrons are in a magnetic field the forces they experience cause them to move in tiny circles. The circling electrons create their own magnetic fields that give rise to diamagnetism. Electrons are tiny magnets themselves, with north and south poles. In most atoms these magnets are paired so their fields cancel. But, if there are an odd number of electrons, the unpaired electron produces a paramagnet. Oxygen, for example, is paramagnetic. In ferromagnets the unpaired electrons in large groups of atoms interact with each other so that they point in the same direction. This group is called a domain. When a ferromagnet is put in a magnetic field the domains can line up with their poles facing the same direction, making the material a magnet. In most materials when the magnetic field is removed the domains revert to their former random directions and the material is no longer a magnet. For certain alloys, however, the domains remain aligned, resulting in a permanent magnet.
What is the little green wire or plate on the 3 to 2 adapter? The green wire or metal tab attached to adapters is the grounding wire. Since the adapter is circumventing the ground prong, an alternate means of grounding is needed. If the screw on the outlet plate is grounded, the green wire on the adapter should be attached to it. This way, if there is an electrical short, the current can still flow through the grounding wire. If the screw is not grounded, then the adapter should not be used. An outlet tester that is available at most hardware stores can be used to make sure the screw is grounded. Was this animal electricity the same as static electricity? According to legend the Italian physician Luigi Galvani, 1737-1798, was making frog leg soup for his sick wife. Whenever a nearby static electricity machine created a spark the legs jerked. After completing several experiments, in a 1791 paper Galvani reported that when one metal touched the muscle of a frog's leg while another metal touched the nerve, the muscle contracted. Thus Galvani helped to show that there was a connection between static electricity and electric effects in animals. When was it thought that there were different kinds of electricity? As you have seen, Benjamin Franklin's kite experiment showed that lightning and static electricity were the same. Since ancient times humans knew that certain fish, such as the electric eel, could shock a person. Why aren't the Van Allen belts present around the North and South Poles? At the equator, the magnetic field is parallel to the ground and the electrons. And protons from the solar wind can become trapped around the field lines. At the poles, however, the magnetic field strengthens, the lines become closer together. And forces on the particles push them back toward the equator. Some of the most energetic particles are able to penetrate the atmosphere where they interact. With oxygen and nitrogen atoms producing the natural light shows that are called auroras. If this were the case, wouldn't riding a bicycle do the same thing? The real reason why a car is a safe place to be when struck by lightning is because most cars have metal bodies. Which act as Faraday cages, keeping all the electrical charge on the outside of the car. Since the charge is kept on the outside of the vehicle. The person sitting inside the car is kept perfectly neutral and safe. It is the shielding of the metal car body, and not the rubber tires, that protects people in automobiles.
When was magnetism discovered? The discovery of rocks that attracted certain metals is lost to history. As was the case with electrostatics, Aristotle, 384 to 322 BCE, credited Thales of Miletus, 625 to 545 BCE. With the first scientific discussion of the attractive power of the rock later called lodestone. The word magnet comes from the region of Greece where lodestone is found. But the power of lodestone was found by other people around the same time. At the time of Thales' life an Indian surgeon, Sushreta, used magnets to aid surgery. In the 4th century. BCE the Chinese Book of the Devil Valley Master says lodestone makes iron come. In the 11th century. CE the Chinese scientist Chen Kuo wrote about the use of a magnetized needle as a compass in navigation. By the next century the Chinese were known to use a lodestone as a shipboard compass. 100 years later the British theologian, Alexander Neckham, described the compass and how it could be used to aid navigation. Some people thought that the pole star attracted the compass. While others thought that the source was a magnetic island near the North Pole. In 1269 the Frenchman Petrus Peregrinus wrote a detailed paper on the properties of magnets. But the most comprehensive and famous work was written by William Gilbert in 1600. Gilbert concluded that Earth was a giant magnet. What are some things you should do if caught in a lightning storm? The safest place to be during an electrical storm is inside a building. Where you should stay away from electrical appliances such as the phone and television, as well as all plumbing and radiators. Or car, but if you are unable to shield yourself in this way, the following precautions should be taken. Crouch down on the lowest section of the ground, but do not let your hands touch the ground. If lightning strikes the ground, the charges spread out sideways and can still reach you. If only your feet are on the ground, especially if you're wearing rubber soled shoes. This might limit the amount of charge that passes through your body. If you must lie down because of an injury, try to roll up into a tight ball. Take off and move away from all metal objects unless they act as Faraday cages. Refer to the question about Faraday cages. Move away from isolated and tall trees. Avoid the tops of hills or mountains and open areas such as water and fields. If out on a lake or on the ocean, get back to shore as quickly as possible. If that is not practical, get down low in the boat and move away from any tall metal masts or antennas. What is the difference between a motor and a generator? In each device, a magnet and a coil of wire are employed to change one form of energy into another form. A motor consists of multiple loops of wire placed in a magnetic field. 
either the loops or the magnet can rotate. The current through the wires in the field causes a force that results in rotation and thus mechanical energy. Motors in a home are used in fans, hair dryers, and food processors. There are over a hundred motors in a modern automobile. The starter motor is the largest and most powerful. A generator does the opposite of a motor, it changes mechanical to electrical energy. But still consists of multiple loops of wire in a magnetic field. Either the loops or the magnet can rotate. In an automobile a form of a generator, called an alternator, uses some of energy from the engine to charge the battery. Backup generators use the energy from a gasoline engine to produce enough electrical energy to keep some of the lights and appliances running in a house when the electrical power fails. Electric utilities use huge generators to provide power for a city or larger area. The generators get their energy from steam turbines. The heat required to turn water into steam can come from coal, oil, natural gas, or nuclear burners. Wind power uses generators turned by the propeller blades. Why are lightning rods effective in keeping tall trees and homes safe from lightning? Lightning rods are pointed metal rods that are installed above a tree or rooftop to protect the object. The rod, connected to the ground by a metal wire, both encourages and discourages a lightning strike. The rod discourages the lightning strike by leaking positive charges out of its pointed top to satisfy the need for positive charge in the clouds. If the rod cannot leak out enough charge to satisfy demand the step leader from the cloud is instead attracted to the rod, and a flash of lightning occurs. Therefore, the rod attempts to discourage lightning, but if it cannot satisfy the negative charge, it attracts the lightning to the rod instead of the tree or house. If the lightning rod doesn't have a good connection to the ground, through the wire it can increase the danger to the building. Often these heavy grounding wires come loose from the lightning rods, and if the rod is then hit by lightning, the charges will flow along the surface of the building to the ground and could cause a fire. The rods can become disconnected from lack of routine maintenance. It is wise to check these connections on a regular basis. How are magnetic materials used in computers? Magnets are used in the compact motors that turn the discs in the CD or DVD. Drive and that move the laser that reads the disc to the correct position. Motors rotate the discs in a hard drive. The arm on which the read slash right head is mounted is rotated to the correct. Portion of the hard drive disc has a coil of wire on it in a magnetic field. When there is a current through the wire the force moves the arm to the correct position. The disc itself is often made of aluminum coated with an extremely thin 10 to 20 nanometers 
film of magnetic material that is divided into submicrometer thick regions that are perpendicular to the surface of the disk. Each region is magnetized one way to represent a one and another way to represent at zero a tiny coil in the read slash right head carries the current that magnetizes the regions. Are there different names for auroras in the northern and southern hemispheres? An aurora in the northern hemisphere, known as the northern lights, is officially called aurora borealis. While an aurora in the southern hemisphere, or southern lights, is called the aurora australis. Where in the world does lightning occur most frequently? Satellite lightning detectors show that over the entire Earth lightning strikes about 45 times each second. Or 1.5 billion strikes each year. In the eastern region of the Democratic Republic of the Congo in Africa every year each square mile. On average, has some 200 lightning strikes. A section of Florida known as Lightning Alley is a 60 mile. Wide hot spot of lightning activity in the United States. On average there are 50 lightning strikes in each square mile per year. What happens to an airplane when it is struck by lightning? Airline pilots tend to avoid thunderstorms, but when a plane is struck by lightning, the passengers inside the plane are kept perfectly safe. For they are inside a Faraday cage, which shields them from the massive electrical charge. The lightning can, however, disturb and even destroy some of the sensitive electronics used to fly the plane. Studies were performed by NASA in the 1980s in which they flew fighter planes into thunderstorms to see how the planes would react to lightning. The scientists quickly found that the planes actually encouraged lighting. Because the planes caused increases in the electric field of the cloud, which in turn caused the lightning to hit the plane's metal body. Studies in the 1980s showed that airplanes actually attract lightning. While lightning storms can still be dangerous. Passengers inside airplanes are safe from electric shock because they are actually inside a Faraday cage. Why is it dangerous to operate electrical devices in bathtubs, showers, and over full sinks? Although water reduces the resistance of the human body and thus makes it more susceptible to electrical shock. It is the plumbing that is the main hazard. Take. For example, a person who likes to watch a plugged-in TV while sitting in the bathtub. If the TV is not connected to a GFI protected circuit and fell into the tub. The water would come in contact with the 120 volt wires in the TV. 
with the metal plumbing of the tub connected to ground. The grounding path would cause a current through the water. Unfortunately, this translates into a bad day for the bather. An MP3 player or battery-powered smartphone is much safer. Who invented the lightning rod? Although a Russian tower built in 1725 had what would now be called a lightning rod. Credit is usually given to American inventor Benjamin Franklin, 1706 to 1790. He invented the lightning rod in 1749 to protect houses and tall trees from being destroyed by lightning bolts. What is matter? Ancient people in many parts of the world believed that all matter was made of four elements. Earth, air, water, and fire. No matter how small an amount of material you had. You could not separate an element into a combination of other materials. What is matter? Ancient people in many parts of the world believed that all matter was made of four elements. Earth, air, water, and fire. No matter how small an amount of material you had. You could not separate an element into a combination of other materials. But if you kept dividing the amount of material into smaller and smaller pieces, what would you obtain? Democritus, a Greek who lived around 410 B. C. E. and was the student of Lysippus of Miletus, ca. 435 BCE, stated that all matter is made up of atoms and the void. Atoms are the smallest piece into which an element can be divided, they are uncut table. They could be neither created nor destroyed, and thus were eternal. The void was empty space. This viewpoint was expanded by the 1st century BCE by the Greek Titus Lucertius Carus. 95-55 BCE, in his epic poem on the nature of things. Aristotle, on the other hand, regarded the atomist philosophy as pure speculation that could never be tested. He rejected the POS civility of empty space and believed. You could divide matter until it was infinitely small. The Greeks were not the only ones to develop a philosophy of atomism. The Indian school of philosophy known as Valsesica and in particular the philosopher Kanada in the 2nd century BCE, held that earth, air, fire, and water could be divided into a finite number of indivisible particles. These ideas were adopted by several other Indian schools of philosophy.
but if you kept dividing the amount of material into smaller and smaller pieces, what would you obtain? Democritus, a Greek who lived around 410 B. C. E. and was the student of Lysippus of Miletus, C. A. 435 B. C. E. Stated that all matter is made up of atoms and the void. Atoms are the smallest piece into which an element can be divided, they are uncut table. They could be neither created nor destroyed, and thus were eternal. The void was empty space. This viewpoint was expanded by the 1st century BCE by the Greek Titus Lucertius Carus. 95-55 BCE, in his epic poem On the Nature of Things. Aristotle, on the other hand, regarded the atomist philosophy as pure speculation that could never be tested. He rejected the POS civility of empty space and believed. You could divide matter until it was infinitely small. The Greeks were not the only ones to develop a philosophy of atomism. The Indian school of philosophy known as Valsesica and in particular the philosopher Kanada in the 2nd century BCE, held that earth, air, fire, and water could be divided into a finite number of indivisible particles. These ideas were adopted by several other Indian schools of philosophy. <laughs>